than that, I just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very, very excited about this workshop. We have called this workshop Colors Across Continents because we are going to co-host this session, Verena and I. Verena is in Germany and we are going to play with color. We're going to share different um, perspectives on color, what it means, why we pay attention to it and we're going to mix some colors together and we're going to show some colors of Berlin and some colors of my home place which is Brisbane. Verena do you want to say hi? Yes I have one too. <laughs> so hi everyone I am Verena I'm living in Berlin Germany we have 12 at noon now mid midday I'm uh I don't know some people know me as Wieder Wilder werden from Instagram already I'm a nature journaling teacher in Berlin uh, and I'm absolutely crazy about nature and color at the moment because um berlin is flowering like crazy we have the uh, the high of spring right now and i'm so excited to share some gifts of colors that's such a beautiful title from bethan with you today and compared to all of the other wonderful places at at your home today yeah i'm really excited Great. Well, do you want to start by talking about um, what will it mean to you? What What are the reasons why you um, why you pay attention to color? Mm. We uh, well, I wanted to start uh, first the the moment you asked me about what is color for me. I was like, well, color. I never really paid attention to color, and then I recently started a wonderful challenge with my nature journaling group here. Maybe some of you know it is the Nature Spot Challenge from uh, Lisa Spengler. You already talked about it in your podcast. And we were all so fascinated. And uh, it, it sounds a little, little weird because we were all like, we do see color now. I don't know if you uh, know this. We, we tried it out and oh, did some nature spots for everything we, we found in our... Uh, our landscape and now color has a meaning for me we are well I wasn't really paying attention to it because I was always like I need to draw a bird I need to find the shapes I need to do correct line work and stuff and was so focused on the yeah I, I always teach it and say like not the pretty picture but actually some sometimes more often than I want to I fixate on that and just focusing on color gave me so much space space and freedom and play and it was especially because I like to work with watercolors it was such a freedom to just look at the colors and really dive into it and just let them do their their thing and like colors do your magic I'm just like giving you a light direction where you want to go and then being playful again and now I'm going through Berlin well Spring is perfect for it, actually. Um, and uh, I am just amazed how colorful everything is. And if you take closer looks at you know, just just a regular flower, you you know the colors of, then you're just fascinated how different. It's just not blue, but it's like, I don't have all the English names for blue. It is so many different shades of it. And I wanted to, I, I have something prepared because sometimes it's the absent of something that you realize it, how important it is do you know this um i have i berlin germany has i always forget it we have some ocean <laughs> on our borders and i haven't been there since this winter and i have been there and i was shocked because there was no color winter is always like very white but there wasn't oh sorry we had this wonderful wonderful um like ocean view and suddenly there was no color there were like pretty birds and stuff but no colors and I was like I had bought a new color palette I wanted to try and I was like okay and now this is there are no colors left and first I was kind of grumpy. Here's a, a nice picture of me <laughs> at the like gray sand beach. Like, hmm, what what to what should I do now? I was really like 
really not amused by this absence of color <laughs> and then i started to look closer because if you take your time and like if you know there, there's the, the the silence the space nothing to do and out of this creativity comes and also color we had like really really too many screens um there was like nothing like stone and some dried grasses and grayish tones but suddenly if you look closer maybe you see it also on the screen where my mouse is there are some tiny birds and they're not so common there and I was like oh my god I did overlook them before um because I wanted to pay attention to the color and then uh, a lot of animals use color for their advantage I was like oh wow those animals use color not just for play but for safety reasons to to have a life there and those tiny floppy birds withstanding the cold it was just amazing and I had like a very grayish um, experience there, but I tried to put it into my sketchbook. I have it here. Um, it look <laughs> we just tested it out. It looks more colorful in the screen, but it's actually kind of grayish. There is the picture I draw drew with the Schneeamann. I don't know the English name actually. They're quite cute birds, and I was like, oh, there's no color left gray 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 I need a completely new palette for uh, drawing into in, in winter in grayish areas but then one morning it was snowing and cold and windy and it was freezing my my mood was really not the best drawing in cold is not my favorite thing but then one day we had this what the finger this greeted us one morning and I was like, oh my God, there's color everywhere. The sunrise was so amazing. And sunrises are always amazing. But suddenly color was something so emotional. Really, I, I cried. It was such a beautiful morning. And th that was one of the first times you realized how important color is. If you just imagine having me and not having like color over my, my face, it would just would be great. We could just talk and after a while you would forget it. Well, if you leave it on for a while and you can perfectly see the 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 I don't know how the the, the color qualities, which is dark, which is light. But if you put it back on, it's like wow, this effect. And that's what I I love about colors now, that I don't see shapes as much as colors now. Sorry, I don't know if that worked. <laughs> The answer to your question, but it's like such a big thing. Like it's learning to see, like nature journaling always is. But colors are colors are amazing. <laughs> how is it? How is it for you, Bethan? <laughs> yeah, that was such a wonderful, um, such a wonderful thing to to think about. That um, that when you when you notice that there aren't colors around and then there are that that brings its own delight so you saw all those grays all those um uh all those colors that were um absent from the from the scene and then and then there they were they were back again with the with the sunrise was it sunrise or sunset it was sunrise, early sunrise, sunrise. and we were just oh, crying. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. yeah, in our com in our pod in our podcast conversation, we talked about being moved, so moved by nature that yeah. you start to cry because it's such a beautiful thing. And um, yes, when you just turned your screen off, uh, or turned your screen into black and white, rather it. Um, and brought brought the color back. It was very, um, it was very evocative. It was it was beautiful, and sometimes yeah. overwhelming. And when I now stand in there, like flowers are everywhere now, and sometimes I'm like I cannot focus on anything. I need to go back into detail into one tiny flower and just look at one because it's so much. Mm -hmm. Because oh, the smell even, <laughs> but color just the color today is sometimes enough. Not to get distracted by shape and smell, just sense by sense, like 
this nature journaling week is con yeah yeah absolutely one day i remember going down there was a particular um it was a particular season and there was lots of leaves falling down uh we have an old dilapidated tennis court none of us play tennis but we uh we use it for riding bikes and uh hang in with the family and um there's all these brown leaves there and they were just so rich the colors were so rich and again it's it's this thing of like having limited vocabulary like it's hard to say what it was I can say it was rich there were sort of nutty browns there was all different um types of brown and I remember walking down there and I remember feeling like you know that feeling when you're in love and you just have your 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 person comes close and you get that bubbly feeling inside it was like that but it was for the colors that were uh in these leaves and that again paying attention just being attentive to to what's around us that feeling comes and it's it's a powerful thing amazing yeah and your landscape i think in australia it's also as well landscapes are always changing and you can just look at one tree and have like nearly unlimited color palette here in Berlin over the seasons and it's like a rainbow in every little tiny space you look over time yeah and it, yeah. it's so much fun to look closer yeah do you have some activities you want to take us through yes I would love to um look at some uh, flowers closer because I wanted to take you on a tiny tiny adventure into yeah the, the play of color some color mixing actually if you all have some um <laughs> I hope you prepared some colors if you just have one pen it's maybe a little hard to do this exercise but just some some pencils or watercolor is uh, just fine I will um I have my uh, downside camera here. So, um, Berlin is colorful and I just uh, found a wonderful, wonderful flower here. And I didn't really see it much till I journaled it, how, how it is often. <laughs> didn't even uh, recognize the flower. I still am not sure about the name, um, but naming is just naming. And I want you to, um, oops, because it's watercolor. Um, I hope the camera is bringing over all the colors. From So the story behind this flower is I was cycling uh, by it and my partner was like, oh, we need to stop, there's a flower. And I'm like, oh, oh dear, there it is again. And because it was so close to the street, I was like, oh no, I don't want to sit right by the uh, side. And the good thing was that I'm <laughs> not seeing very good. And so the shapes of the flowers just vanished. And I just saw the colors and like had a two minutes, two minute sketch of just dropping in some colors. And that's what I want to do with you now. Um, because I was color mixing, not looking at shapes. Um, I hope everyone is seeing uh, this big enough because it's really tiny at my screen. But um, yeah, I'm I'm picking one tiny flower here, and I want to try with you now to look at this color and try and to mix it. Because when you're sitting in nature, maybe you have not too much time. Um, maybe even just have like the primary colors. It's possible to mix nearly any color, and the more often you do it, it's it's really getting easier. I, I don't know what's your um, experience, Bethan, but for me, it's like you're getting to know your uh, palette. So I like to work with a uh, water brush. Many of you know them, I guess. And um, we're now <laughs> cleaning the palette. I, I still don't know if I want to clean my palette or, palette or not. I don't know what's your uh, favorite way to go, Bethan. Do you work with a clean palette? Or... Thing, it's so interesting. I have this... Um love of just having a messy palette exactly like yours and then it's this odd thing but the next thing I do always seems to have something from the last time 
and I just do, 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 incorporate it always. That's also my experience. Well, just looking at it, I'm just backing up a little. Um, just looking at your own color palette at home maybe is also a indicator of what colors are present right now, what are you using very often, and how like the the remaining parts of color is at the moment. For me, it was as you saw like the the purplish, the the bluish ones, and like you said, Bethan, it's always the colors that you need are there. I don't know, it's like like the color magic, and those in the corners are mostly are often the best. The tiny spots in the corner that's uh, the most amazing colors, right? So um, I guess that's because they're always like the browns and the grays because you've mixed everything together. Yeah. And that if you just use colors right out of the, your your tube or palette, those colors are sometimes very either bright or boring. But the more you get into shadings of stuff, they're getting more interesting and like toned down. And um, for me, that's like the 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 spirit of something coming into into life. So for this flower, I, yeah, we're doing this later with Bethan. Ah, no, I'm okay. seeing my picture. Ah, um, later with you, Bethan, we're um, trying naming colors, not to spoil anything, but um, I just tried without words um, because uh, I have some primary colors in my, my journal, like the cyan, I think that's the English name for it, some magenta and some... <laughs> very dirty yellow primary yellow um and not to get too deep into color mixing but if i just look at a flower and it's like huh you're training your eye in which direction do i have to go from here and uh, i i guess yellow is not the right one and i am more in this direction and then i'm i'm trying just to where are you going and then just picking up some 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 cyan and trying to play with it. It's really like not I'm eagerly like trying to match the color. It's more like trying to find a way to communicate with someone when you know, don't know a person and you don't know the vibe or something. You're like, what's your hobby? What do you like? And that's for me like color <laughs> mixing. Like, hey, how how are you? How are you working? What is your your vibe? I, I hope that the point gets over. It's a little complicated to do it in English, but it's like, hmm, are you like a half, a half and a half person flower? Like, do you just do the, oh, it's not on screen. Like half and half cyan and magenta. And then I just put down some dots and I'm not too careful about how to put it down. And compared to the flower, normally it's more uh, complicated because the flower is still uh, in the field then I have to go down on my knees on my nose in the dirt and it's also a wonderful thing to do to get on the uh, like eye to eye with the uh, per, um, flower person and now I'm just like ah oh, maybe it's a little too I need some more a uh, little darker shades of cyan in this and just try to vary the the shades of it and maybe doing some play and trying out some some shades and then comparing it. And it's really not, it's not a problem if you don't get it right. You can do as many like tiny dots and circles as you want and just make like a flower bed out of it. What uh, are there flowers uh, at your place right now, Bethan? How is isn't today yeah, the week of winter? Yes, oh. but in Australia we're upside down, and so we have a, quite a lot of um, flowers that bloom around this time. Yeah, and yeah, we do. We've got lots of things happening here. That's Interestingly, awesome. autumn is a time of great. Um, flower okay Great. in the same way that you would um you yeah. know have a lot of things blooming in spring we have the same in autumn it's amazing and now i just mixed together some variations of cyan and magenta and luckily this flower is very thankful and if you i don't know if it gets 
focus the nerve. Sometimes you really have to make this camera to focus. No focus today. Do the beep. Well, you can see the colors. You, you don't need to see the shapes. Maybe it's even good if you don't focus. There's some gradient and stuff. And the closer you look, the more you see colors. And in the beginning, I was like, well, I need maybe this, this color. And the closer I look, I find all of the shades in this flower. And this is so amazing. And that's the, the magic. That's what I found out. Like, I try to get to the color I need. And nature is like, I have them all. Look closer. <laughs> it's like, ah. Verena, can you unmute yourself, please? I am muted. Hi. Sorry about that. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for reminding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and that, I love that's what, what I want. you were saying about um, color mixing. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a recipe. It's a game. It's yeah, like and try to go play. into a, a playful mode, like, mm -hmm. like throwing a ball back and forth and then you it's not like catching the ball but the the game you're doing all along and the, the magic with watercolor I love watercolor is that it's had is has its mind of their own the colors and I have like three nice. purples in my co color palette because I love purple but again and again I find myself mixing it anyway and I have one with mm -hmm. like glitter and some dark shades like for comfy reasons I don't have to mix it every time and it gets more darker or more vibrant but um even interchanging your color palette is awesome to your seasons and yeah well now it's very uh, flowery and purplish right now in Berlin but I just took a photo right now down at my uh, house I wanted to show you and it's like a little I'm not too depressing but kind of depressing um because you can see where is it um the color the, it's very colorful everything but i don't know if you can recognize it on the, the picture um it's getting brownish and dried out again and we hadn't rain for like three weeks now and the forecast isn't good and i'm really dreading the climate change and i'm really using color as more also an, an indicator of how nature is doing and trying to be also very careful and present where I can help if something changes its color plants are trying to talk to you my house plants are like water me please <laughs> and, and also <laughs> nature around you is like um yeah we need help and we need action and all the color magic and the gift of color is also a way to communicate not just uh, pretty flowers but also really helping each other out yeah observing colors and the changes over time is really important yeah so my my message to you is try to play with color and be more present about how you can use it also to communicate in your journal get down your feelings and nature around mm. you but then you also prepared okay. something fun for us right I oh, did. Yeah. Yeah. Let me um, let me share my screen. I I loved seeing the colors of Berlin. Let me share my screen and see what we got here. So I made this little whoops. Made this little graphic to represent this amazing connection between us on all these different continents at the same time sharing color. And I wanted to play with the colors of my home because I have this feeling that color helps me connect with my place in the world. And I live on the east coast of Australia in a place called Sanford Valley, which is uh, my, my closest big city is Brisbane. And here, this is the color palette that we have. This is the sorts of colors that sing to me. These are the ones that that make me come alive and I was thinking about the colors and how limited our language 
for color is. So we can say green, we can say brown, but these colors are not fitting into those categories for me. The greens are not the greens you might envision if you came from New Zealand or Norway or somewhere where the grass is very um, like strongly, vibrantly green. Um, and the browns, okay, yeah, they're browns, but they're also orangey and they're pinkish. And I'm searching all the time for words that uh, that relate to the colors in a more precise way. And it can be a really fun activity to play with naming colors. So I thought what we could do is um, do some color mixing of the colors of my home and see if we can play with naming. There's my little um, Berlin flower. And these are the colors that I use. So you're saying that it can be um, really sort of liberating to um, use a limited palette. You know, you said you have purples, but you tend to mix them. Well, I don't have green on my palette. I always mix it. Um, and this is what they call, you might have heard them talk about, or people talk about um, a split primary palette, which is, um, which is this. So it really is just a warm and a cool version of each of the primary colors. And we can do almost everything with cyan, magenta, and yellow, as, as you said, Verena. Um, but when we add in these other variations, the warm and cool, um, so warm red, warm yellow, and warm blue, it makes color mixing really intuitive and fun. So on when you lay it out like this, things that touch each other are going to mix really bright colors, and things that are opposite each other are going to mix really muted colors. And so I love laying it out like this so that I can just reach for my colors and really quickly make a muted green or a bright green. If I wanted to make this bright green here, I would take this cyan, which is my cool blue and my cool yellow because they're side by side and it makes this beautiful bright green. But if I wanna mix something closer to the colors of my home, which is really dusky and muted, I take ones that are opposite. So I use warm blue and it's opposite, which is warm yellow and it comes out, I'm gonna show you now. So here I've got them all laid out on my palette. And I'll show you what happens when I mix um, these opposite colors. Can you see they, it turns out really muted. But if I mix the colors that are side by side, it turns out really bright and vibrant. Now this, is lovely and it might be great for painting grass in New Zealand. I, I keep saying New Zealand because when I went, to, <laughs> when I first left home, I went to New Zealand for a couple of years and I remember flying into Auckland and, and seeing the grass as I was flying over and just being astonished at the colour of New Zealand because it's so different from my home and the green was so green. It was like this. So if I want to mix this bright green, I choose the colors that are side by side. So the cool blue and the cool yellow. If I want to mix my colors, and I say my colors because they're the colors that are part of me because I grew up with these colors. I mix the blue and the green that are far from each other on the, <clears throat> on the wheel. Um, now, if I want to make this bright green into a muted green, all I have to do is cross the wheel again because that's crossing the wheel if you think of it like this crossing the wheel makes things muted so all I have to do is take a little bit of one of these reds and add it into here and I'm going to get something really muted can you see how that grassy New Zealand green has now turned into a eucalyptus green <clears throat> so if I put a little swatch of this it's going to remind me of the colors of Australia, because it's really muted. This one, let me mix a little more blue into here. This one's also a color 
that's familiar to me of eucalyptus leaves. Beth, and when Let's... we get a chance, can you show us your color wheel again? Like when you're done this, just yeah. for people's reference? Yeah, 100%. So this, this is a really, really useful way to set it up. And um, I'm going to put it um, like this. And maybe if you're interested in this, you can take a screenshot. I can hold it here and you can take a screenshot uh, because these uh, this is how I learned about color theory and I use it, uh, it inside me now and I just do it intuitively. But uh, when I when I understood this thing about choosing colors close to each other on the wheel, making vibrant colors and opposites mute, muting, I was away. I didn't have um, I didn't have any trouble mixing almost any color. And it's actually my party trick now to um, Sometimes when I'm teaching color mixing <laughs> or I'm at a workshop and someone's saying, how do you mix this color? Then I'll just pick something, even like the table color or the, or I'll just pick something up and two seconds and you mix it up. And it's really, <laughs> it is like color magic. It is, it is quite astonishing. So um, this I've set out, what I do is I set my mixing um, plate in the same way so that the, so when you've done this a few times, your um, your body just knows, you know, where they are and what's next to each other. I'm going to try and mix um, one of these brownie colors. And I love what you said, Verena. Um, you kind of say in your mind, like, what color is it closest to? So it's kind of closest to. I'm looking at. Um, I'm looking at these brownie colors it's kind of closest to orange so I'll start by mixing up an orange and then just bring in your third primary and see like already we're just we're coming closer to it so I'm going to put that down on my page these colors just sing to me and I know that they maybe look muted or boring to other people but because because they're part of my history they're part of my heart they they just they just make me so happy okay so we're going to play a game of naming colors because I think this is um this is something that we can practice doing in our nature journals and uh I think it's really valuable I'm we're going to spend one minute reflecting on these colors and and if you've been practicing with colors at home your own landscapes or what you could do it with this one we're going to name some colors so let's just take a minute and it doesn't have to be Engelbert Helmperding it, it can just be you know it's something that comes up for you it doesn't have to be um, a fancy fancy name so let's take a moment to name this cup co these colors or any colors that you've been mixing Okay, so I would love to um, hear about your colors. Maybe you can type them in the chat. I've called my um, pinky one dusky rose. Dusky is a word that always comes up into my mind 
uh, with Colors of Australia. Dusky, I don't, I don't know. Just feels right to me. Um, slate green. I don't. That may be actual an actual color. Anyway, that's what came into my mind. I called this one Berlin purple. <laughs> Early morning sea, hot earth. What beautiful, evocative words. Terracotta, yes. Sage perinkle, rust, yes. These are such rich, juicy words that we, misty green, yes. These are things that evoke our senses. They, they mean so much more than just green. Moss green, yes. Old saddle brown, my goodness, that's amazing. Yes. Summer eucalyptus, Korean celadon green, yes. Olive green, yes. Avocado skin, these are amazing. Mellow sage, these are just lighting up my heart, these words. They're so useful and so rich. Yes, I'm so happy about that. I think that's an amazing activity and uh, one that you can take into your own journal practice anytime. So I've got a couple of other things to show you. Um, so this is a book which uh, is by an author called Mimi Robinson and it is my favourite book about colour and this is the cover of the book and this is a page from it. And so what Mimi does is she uh, captures the essence of uh, a landscape with just uh, a couple of words and a little spot of colour. And I guess this is a bit similar to the uh, the practice of creating a colour spot, but this is for a whole landscape. Um, and again, these are words that are just so evocative and rich. Fog in the trees. That's, a, that's an amazing name for a colour. Cliff at sunset. And how beautiful are, are these just little snippets of colour. Let me see. This is um, another thing that Mimi does, which is that she has a photo, and you could, of course, do this while you were sitting in a landscape. And then she just does a grid of colour that represents her scene, the scene where she is. And so I'd like to do that with the colours of my landscape. The, this is a dry sclerophyll forest and, and these are the colours of my heart. They're um, absolutely quintessentially Australian and I think we should make a little colour grid with these colours and we're going to, again, mix, mix with this split primary palette and see what happens. So look at this. Isn't that sweet? I just get, I get excited by a splodge of colour on, on my palette. So I'm going to use this because I can see in this landscape um, a black, a really nice, beautiful black, which is because um, the, the landscape in Australia is... Um, prone to fire and fire is actually really important for this landscape and I want to teach you one amazing trick for making black really quickly and that is we have this uh we've taught this thing in in primary school that this red and this blue is going to make um purple but it doesn't because these two if we go back to a wheel check this out this is cool blue and this warm red are opposite each other and anything opposite can make a black. So when we, um, when we see like a cyan and a warm red, which I call fire engine red, they're always going to mix black. <clears throat> so what I've done here is I've just mixed across the wheel this really, really instant black. Um, okay, let's make a grid to represent this. So I'm going to put a black because black charred stumps are really important color in the Australian landscape. All right, I'm going to snitch from what we already did, which is this slate green.
but you can do this for your landscapes. And it can be a way of paying attention, noticing what's around you and really, really coming to know the colours of your place. Again, I'm going to snitch this dusky rose. What else? We've got, I can see some really rich red browns. So I'm going to start with the red. Remember that brown is a mixture of all the colours. So, so that, um, you can see what happened there is this um, cyan is a really powerful colour and it, it overtakes. Brown is a mixture of all three colours, as is black, but just in different proportions. So we can play around with um, how much of each. Ooh, sometimes you go too far. But I can see down the bottom of there, there's some bark that looks quite like that. Bring in some of this blue, and I think we're there. I want to show you a great way to mix um, a lovely, easy chocolate brown because I don't, I don't have many more than these colors on my palette. It's so easy and quick and useful to um, to use them. And once you get into the habit of using them, um, you don't want other other colors just complicate. Um, so what I do to mix a nice chocolate brown is to mix an orange and I mix these two uh, dark uh, warm red and warm yellow that are side by side. So I'm mixing, mixing a really vibrant orange. And then <clears throat> I cross, I'm gonna show you this again. Can you see the warm section, warm yellow, warm red? I cross uh, the circle and I'm gonna take um, my ultramarine blue, my warm blue and instantly you get this beautiful chocolate brown. A little bit more. How's that? I just want to eat that. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, chocolate brown. And I think it needs one more green. This is a really nice Aussie green, but I think we have something a little more vibrant than that. So I'm going to bring in, I'm just going to mix up a quick green. If I use my um, cyan, it's going to make a really bright green, which is a good place to start because I can see some bright greens in there. But I'm just going to cross the palette and bring in a teeny touch of red to make it a bit more Aussie. There we go. So I think those colors represent the colors of the dry sclerophyll forest, which is my habitat. That's another activity that you can do um, easily in your own landscape. It's a really wonderful thing to do. Um, but then I feel like I'm taking all the airtime. Do you want to? Um, do you want to do something? I've got another activity, but I, I don't. <laughs> I'm completely amazed and. I never paid attention so much to color mixing. It's, oh my God. Yes, and it makes <laughs> so much fun. It's really like playtime and listening to you while doing this is, uh, it's storytelling and you're, uh, you're, you're just, I, I quoted you now in my journal, like how does it color sing to me? Uh, and when you <laughs> tell the story, it's like you're singing the song of a landscape and like writing it down. It's really beautiful. It's just, yeah, wow. Lovely. It was just Should we nice. do one more activity? Yes, please. Uh, well, yeah. Me, please. <laughs> okay. well <laughs> so this is another um, book that I love, which is really, it's not a book about colour necessarily. It's uh, by Claire Walker-Leslie, who is like the grandmother of nature journaling. She's been doing it for 50 years. And, um, but her style is really accessible. This book is all about her experiences in nature and family over a year. But I just love the um, the colours that are evoked through this book and the simplicity of it because it doesn't have to be 
difficult. And she does this amazing thing, and I don't know if it has a name, but um, I call it a colour landscape. And by that, I mean she just takes the colour, you could take a landscape and she just takes the colour that's at the top and the next one and the next one and the next one. And so you can see that this picture on the right is representing a landscape. But where's the landscape? She doesn't, you don't have to draw it in meticulous detail. You don't have to fuss over it. She just represents it with colour. And I think that, and you can see actually on the page of her book, she's done that as well. And I thought that it could be fun to do that with this, which is the uh, Stra uh, the landscape near me, which is Stradbroke Island. Um, this is about one hour from my home and it's a holiday destination and it's a very wonderful part of my life and my heart as well. And I'm really happy to share these colours with you. There's, yeah, there's the, the colour of the ocean and um, the sky and the stones that it's all it's all tied up with feelings and memory and all that stuff for me. So I, I'm happy to share it with you. And what I thought we could do is um, create one of these layered landscapes and we'll see we'll see what happens. So I've never actually done this activity before, but I thought it would be fun. And um, now I'm wondering how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do something really cheeky and turn my book upside down. And when I look back on it, I'm going to <laughs> have one page the right way up, one upside down, but that's okay because I need to be near my um, document camera. Okay, let's start at the top. So we want to um, we want to make a nice pale sky. I think a wonderful way to make a sky is to start with um, ultramarine blue, but you can see this is much, much too... Um, too warm for our sky in the in the photograph. So I'm gonna add some cool blue. A little warm blue with a touch of cool blue makes a really great sky. Now this is too strong for our sky. So I'm going to thin it water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a layer cake of colors. So let's just make, make this something to represent the sky. When you play with colours enough, you start to um, name them. I, mean, I don't have it here on my palette, but that, that colour is manganese blue hue. If I took manganese blue hue straight out of the tube, that's the colour it would be. Okay, so look at that beautiful um, deep green, sorry, deep blue sea, the deep blue sea. All right, I'm going to start mixing and see what happens so this one is much richer I'm going to do the same colors but in different proportions and to me it looks a little it's not as bright as this so I'm going to cross the palette I'm going to cross over and add um add something else to make it a little bring it a little bit more into <clears throat> the Prussian blue Prussian blue region kind of like that let's go let's go the next layer. I hope Claire Walker Leslie would approve of this activity. <laughs> She's a very nice lady. I interviewed her for the podcast as well. So now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some of these. I'm going to mix a few colours at the same time so we can splodge them all together. Um, we need some dusky green again. So Let's just play with the colours that we've already got. Mix up any old green and then cross the palette and get some red to make it into that dusky colour. We need a few different greens here, I think. I'm looking at the colours that are on that rock. Okay. Oh. Look how strong that um, cyan is. You just put out a teeny bit and it goes, takes over. So I can just keep 
going back and forward. It's a game. It's a fun game. Okay, that's better. Stay away from that. It's a very dangerous color. Right, I'm going to mix up um, this really dark chocolatey brown. So I'm going to start again with my um, orange. Start with an orange and we're going to make this chocolate brown again. Orange and then some um, ultramarine blue makes a really nice rich chocolatey brown, which we can use for the rocks. It's really quite black, isn't it? Almost. Let's have some brown and maybe some black. Remember how to make black, which is the cyan and fire engine red. Instant black when it should be purple. This is why playing with your paints is really important because you get to know the color theory from intuition, from what you're told at school. All right. Okay, I'm going to, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water down and I'm going to add some of these colors to this layered landscape. Hmm. I guess we could sort of indicate the rocks. A bit of black in here. A bit more green for the trees. Can you tell I don't know what I'm doing? <laughs> okay. I'm happy with the colors. Let's go, um, let's go to the beach. So again, like what color is the beach? Is it Orange? Is it? I have no idea how to describe that color. Sandy, we could call it sandy. Um, now that's too yellow. So let's add a bit of red. Too red. So add the third, always going back to the back and forward between the three. All right, that's too long, so I'm gonna mute it down. Here we go, here's the beach. And I'm gonna put some rocks in with just a little bit of the brown we used before. Okay, the fun part. We're gonna go into this beautiful turquoise ocean. Now, I have this fancy color and it's called cobalt turquoise. No, it's not. It's called um, Windsor Green Blue Shade. And I thought I need this color. I'll show you what it looks like. Here it is. I thought this would be good for um, fancy things like, um, like oceans. Isn't that a nice color? But in fact, we can mix something really, really similar. We don't need all the fancy things. We can just mix it from our um, split primary. So my palette is gone. That actually looks like the cover of Claire's book. I love it. <laughs> um, this amazingly strong color, which is um, our cyan, phthalo blue, and a teeny of this its neighbor, which makes the bright color, bright um, green. Look how close it is to our fancy turquoise that I spent $30 on. You can, you can do it. It's the same color, right? <laughs> um, so you, you, you don't need all the hundreds of tubes. Do you want me to show you something really embarrassing? Okay. These are the collections of, um, watercolor tubes that I've bought over the years. Da, 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 da. Do you know how many of these I use? Zero, because I don't need them anymore. <laughs> because I learned color theory and you only need six. So I'm not even gonna use this fancy green. I'm gonna use the one we mixed, which is the phthalo blue and a tiny touch 
of um, yellow. So there's some white. I'm going to leave some space for that beautiful white ocean, uh, ocean waves. And then I'm going to, oops. I'm going to put in the sea. with some space for those white breaking waves. Look what we did. We created a layered landscape. What else do we need? I feel like we need a, a little bit of bright green up here somewhere. I don't know if I can pull that off. I've made it. But isn't that fun? It's such a great way to um, Capture. I mean, that's a really simple, um, playful way to capture a landscape. And if you looked at that without knowing what it was, you might be able to tell that it's a sky and a sea. Maybe you won't, maybe you wouldn't, but who cares? It was fun to do. <laughs> to me, that looks like the sky and a sea, and it looks like the colors of my home and this, um, this beautiful place, which is. Stradbrook Island and so those are the colors of my place and how I like to play with them um Verena tell me something <laughs> Beth, oh. can you just before Verena um jumps in can you give us the names of the six colors you used yes so the colors the color names specifically aren't important um but I'll tell you what I um I'll tell you what is important let me share my screen again I tell you what is important <laughs> <laughs> very good tell about what's important do you want me to tell you something else embarrassing Everything. um <laughs> I have these folders on my desktop and Every time I do a workshop, I didn't do it for us because International Nature Journaling Week is a forgiving crowd. <laughs> when I do a workshop, I put all the folders to one another so that I only have one on the desktop and um, I call it everything. And then when then it spills out and then I do another workshop and I put everything into another everything folder. So I have I have nested everything folders on my desktop. Um, okay, enough embarrassing things. This is um, this is what's important. So I can, if you like, tell you exactly the colors that I used. Um, maybe um, Karina, you can type them as I say. Them. Um, my warm yellow is. Um, new gauge but what I want to say is that any um any warm yellow is going to do it so you don't need the names I'm going to give you the names because I know it's important sometimes for people to feel like they know the colors but any warm any warm yellow is going to do it um my actual warm red which if you look for something that fire engine red um it's going to do it. This is this one is called Scarlet Lake. Brands don't matter. Just look for something that looks like a fire engine. Um, <clears throat> Michael Red uh, Magenta is Quinacridone Magenta. I was trying to think of, um, and I couldn't at that moment, but another really great warm yellow is Quinacridone Yellow. No, Quinacridone Gold, pardon me. <clears throat> so Quinacridone Magenta. Um, warm blue is ultramarine, French ultramarine if you want to be fancy. Um, this one, cool blue is thalo blue. I can't find the box. Cool yellow, any cool yellow is going to do it. So by cool yellow, I mean a yellow that's leaning towards green. Can you see how this one looks more greeny than that one this one's warm because it looks like it's gonna um it looks like it's pending towards the fiery red um my cool yellow is hansa yellow light 
but any cool yellow, any yellow that looks like that, that could be lime, could be limey, lemony is going to do it. So those are my um, favorites. Uh, but as I say, it's the cool, cool blue, cool yellow, warm red, warm yellow, warm red, magenta and warm blue. That's important, not the specifics of the um, of the names and the brands and the types. I hope that helps. Wow, that was just wonderful. <laughs> Thank Tell you. me some stuff. What did you what did you get up to? Show me what you did. Oh yes, of course. Wait. Um, here it is. Well, I did a like a yeah. tiny comparison from to our places. And okay. the color mixing was completely different. I had to clean my palette in between because of the the turquoise and the the blues are different. Water is never the same and light is never the same. And I was amazed. And I really got into a playful mood. I really love it. And um, <laughs> the connection to a place, how important it is for you, it rep re is represented in colors. And colors are like feelings and mood. And it, it felt like mm -hmm. you storytelling via colors. And oh, I'm, I, I so want to visit sometimes this wonderful places all over. I think every one of you has their own like favorite place nearby and maybe you can journal it one day in like the way Bethan did right now and like do like little postcards memory like doing some little I want to remember this special place for me and it doesn't for me landscapes are always like scary things but no it wasn't scary it was like a fun game and you can do this with everyone together and yeah, it, I really am scared of watercolor paper. And now it was like, oh, wow, it's just fancy and it's doing its thing. And color mixing isn't so important. It's um, the split primary, right? It was really mm -hmm. fun to do. And the naming. I love the naming part. I had so many fun names coming into my head, mostly tell related me some to... Of the, tell me them in German. Um, This one, can you see? I don't like, speak German. Um, <laughs> It's a Weizengras smoothie. It's like the, the fancy green smoothies you can make out of the, if you grow wheat, flour? Wheatgrass? Yeah, yeah, yeah wheatgrass. <laughs> and like warm mint and yes. like sour olive. Mm -hmm. Like I had like, maybe I'm hungry because it's like my day and I'm like, oh, everything was related, greenish to food and like a summer shadow and a rusty bike. So it was wonderful to give names wow. I, I yes. found it quite nice because in um we are not into naming things in nature journaling we don't actually need names but finding new names is so much fun and gives you so much space and another playground because not everyone likes color mixing but if you're into finding new words it's everything is connected it's so much fun yeah absolutely did you just say rusty bike yeah is that one of your color names? That's this is this is Rusty Bike, I mean, Post. <laughs> that is the best. In, like, think about what comes to your mind when someone says, "Oh, this is this color is called Rusty Bike." Literally, that just brings up all sorts of things from childhood. It brings up like a feeling. It brings up feelings. It brings up like a sense of of play. It brings up like to me, like, oh, maybe the bike's been in the yard for a while and we haven't been riding it. Oh, that how evocative is just that that label of that color. And I know what color it is because mm -hmm. it's it's made, you know, we talk about I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, and that it reminds me of helps us make connections with things we know and things we're just lear learning about. And the color rusty bike I know what that is because I it reminds me of all these things that I have in my memory in my heart in my sensory backstory that I love it it's it's fabulous I love that name yeah I, I'm really into those naming colors I always had the like question in my mind does everyone see blue as a blue maybe your blue is a red and 
as a rusty bike it's more like also a, a texture and a feeling and an emotion like you said right now and I, I love to do a little game at my workshops with uh, not just describing a plant how it looks like but just telling stories about color and the colors I name somebody else has to to mix and to see differences oh, or even that's a fun game yeah some some similarities in also like yes I know like we do like oh yeah I, I know what rusty bike is and then it's all <laughs> about connection and if you maybe don't mix exactly the right rusty bike color it's more like oh, yeah, the story and I know it and oh yeah I saw this flower no for me it's like more a darker shade and now you're in conversation and having emotions and telling stories about places and colors yeah. are very connecting thing to play with that is an amazing game I'm going to take that and use it like if you said okay class now we're going to meet up the color green smoothie or no wheatgrass wheatgrass shot smoothie you're gonna do something really similar to what you did but also you're you're right it it brings up a conversation and oh your green your green smoothie is a little different from my green smoothie oh sometimes I put a beetroot in my green smoothie yeah. so now it's brown what it was oh, mixing whatever it is <laughs> yeah and it's the one of game. there's always like questions back and discussions and people sometimes are scared of color theory because the word theory mixing yeah. and if you go into with a playful mood and don't be aren't scared in your nature journal to use colors as a fun thing like magic do you think it's always like we just did some colors and just plotted them down on journal but it, nobody corrects and like no this is not the right shade of blue no 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 yeah. but it's like wow I can imagine landscapes and feelings and you have the memory with you and it's so great and you can talk about it with other people looking and you. how simple look at look again at your landscapes mm -hmm. and how simple they are You've got some blue, you've got some green, you've got some sandy colors, and and there you are. It evokes a sparkly sea on a Sunday, on a sunshiny day. Yeah, and you did it in ten minutes, less than ten minutes. And it's not scary. It's just it's not scary. And it you can also do it with uh, pencils. It doesn't have to be watercolor. I guess I'm always like too lazy for pencils actually because I have to sharpen them all the time. Uh, but <laughs> I guess you can also work with that or just uh, a limited palette and try out and do you know the uh, Inktober challenges when people are doing the just ink sketches after a month of doing that it was so amazing to introduce color back into my life and the journal and everyone who did it is like oh yeah never lose the colors again and I I'm wondering how it is for people who don't see colors or only have like a limited palette. And I am also wanted to give the, the questions or the experience and maybe lay down the question around, oh, we are over the time. But maybe if there are experiences, if there's some yeah, questions or yeah, maybe ideas around that topic. Yeah. I, that's so interesting what you said about Inktober. Inktober is if you don't, if, you're watching and you don't know it's uh it's a challenge where for one month you only use ink although some people do add colors but mostly it's just black and white um and then to reintroduce color what a joy that must have been uh, but um yeah if we have we are over time but if you want to stick around and we can um we can take some questions let me um let me go to gallery view and it uh if you've used um if you've used zoom before down the bottom you can see a, a reactions um thing and it, if you click on that um it has a raised hand feature and you can raise your hand and we'll know that you want to ask a question um Dani, do you want to ask a question you've got a star up there You'll have to unmute. <laughs> or maybe you don't want to. I'm sorry, I feel like I put you on the spot. No question, Bethan. Just 
in awe of you. You are a diva. Oh. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask about colour or um, about Berlin or about Stradbroke Island <laughs> or any other thing? Bethan, someone mentioned in the chat about that condition. I forget what it's called right now. Synesthesia, maybe, where people can see colors when they hear yeah. music. Yes, that's an incredible thing. I don't have this um, sense, but we, you know, we're talking about um, senses this week and how um, our senses. You know, we're focusing on one sense each day, but yeah, some people experience the senses not in isolation, but all mixed in a watery wash of of experience which which must be something else how about it looks like there's no questions oh, no. Uh, kim has a question yeah. oh kim yes hi hello <laughs> um not so much a question as a, a request i was wondering if we could maybe all just share our pages if we if we've done that yeah it would be really idea. awesome to see yeah, if you go up to the top uh, right-hand side, you can see gallery view. It says view there. If you click on gallery view, you'll, you'll be able to see everybody. Um, and then we can hold up our pages and see, oh, look, mine's upside down. Um, we can see what went on. Yes, look at these pages. I see Stradbroke Island. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, it's so amazing are... how connected it is. Your place is everywhere around the world now, Bethan. How wonderful is that? Great suggestion, Kim. Thank you. Show me yours. You look at those blues. Yeah. That exercise where it's a layered landscape. I think is something really simple that we can take away and do in our nature journals without fear, without worry, just letting it go and connecting with colour and landscape uh, with joy. If there's no more questions, we will let you all go and enjoy the rest of colour day if you um, if you still have day left. It's actually night time for for us here and so we will be heading to bed soon but it's been amazing to connect with you Verena thank you so much for sharing this um workshop thank you so much dear Beth and and maybe everyone can share their journal pages as well on the platform you um arranged maybe Karina yeah, can so there's um you can share your pages on social media if that works for you and uh, I think a lot of people don't like social media, so there's now a way to share directly on the International Nature Journaling Week website, and it's through a platform called Padlet. And so we would love to see your pages, uh, your colourful pages go up on there if you, if you feel like it. And if you don't, that's fine. But it's been a real heartwarming joy to spend this time with you. Thank you so much for coming along to the workshop and enjoy the rest of the week. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. So Thank you, Bethan, and everyone.